morning to welcome to our Sunday service here at uh, St Mary's in uh, Piddle Hinton. Welcome to our congregation, but also welcome to those of you who are watching live or will be watching later. The service is recorded. Um, before we start, just a couple of notices. First notice, Iron Man would have been today, but it was cancelled at the last minute. Uh, but last week was the ecclesiastical version of Iron Man, and so we should thank our parishioners who took part in that. You are, you are a guiding light to uh, many of us and making us feel very, very unfit. Uh, but thank you to uh, those who take taken part. You really are a guiding light. Thank you. Um, we should also say, uh, express my gratitude and thankfulness to those who help, help out in our benefits, to Reverend Helia and to Ginny as well. They keep the show rolling. We are doing our very best to make sure our churches are open and we are doing our very best to make sure they are COVID safe. And in doing so, other parishes have copied our practices, which endorses what we do as good. So thank you. Thank you to those people who help. I notice as I go out in the car to walk into church, there is this furore in the village about a second wave of coronavirus. People were discussing this risk, and it is a prevalent risk to us. Once they saw me, they all darted back in their homes. It's a real missed opportunity because today our gospel reading does speak about our fears and our anxieties, our justices, our injustices, our equalities and inequalities. It speaks into that. And so with an open mind and with an open heart, we can actually hear what God has to say into that subject. So the point here is there's a real missed opportunity for those who are not going to hear today's message. Let's start by singing our first hymn, which is hymn number 185. We do have an established choir here, so if you'd like to sing, please do. Um, hymn number 185, Light Abode Celestial. And we're going to omit the start of verses. Omit the start of verses. 185. <laughs>
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us together say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's admit to ourselves and to each other our need of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sin, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So together, let us confess our sin in penitence, and in faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commands and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sin for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Would you please accept God's forgiveness? Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon, pardon and deliver you from all your sin. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. steadfast in faith and active in service, 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading is taken from the book of Jonah, chapter 3, beginning at verse 10. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said would, he would do to them, and he did not do it. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. And he prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relenting from disaster. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Do you do well to be angry? Jonah went out of the city and sat to the east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade till he should see what would become of the city. Now the Lord God appointed a plant and made it come up over Jonah that it might be a shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God appointed a scorching east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Do you do well to be angry for the plant? And he said, Yes, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord said, You pity the plant for which you did not labour, nor did you make it grow which came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should not I pity Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also much cattle? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Beginning with the last and then going. 
came to the first. When those hired about five o'clock, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last work only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last as the same I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And say, so may I speak in the name of one God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Please be So how did you interpret today's Gospel? How did you interpret today's Gospel? What did you hear? Our Gospel today speaks of labourers labouring in a vineyard. Some of those worked only one hour, and yet they were paid the same as those who worked there all day. So what did you interpret in today's Gospel? Because this passage could be read, it could be read in equal comfort by the socialist mind as well as the more capitalist mind. Firstly, you may have heard of God's impartiality, the socialist mindset, that all of them needed their own money to survive, or maybe the more capitalistic approach of God's partiality, that the employer is free to do what he wants with his own money, or maybe you just interpreted the gospel passage as an utter injustice. Maybe what you heard was a mean employer who ran out of workers and at the last moment in the day needed more workers and at such short notice he then paid them the same amount of money. Maybe that's what you heard. How you interpreted that passage says something about you. It tells you and others of your concern. Your concerns for justice, your concern for equality, and your concern for inequality. And thousands of sermons will be preached today on this very gospel about our concerns, our concerns for justice, our concerns for equality. But the parable today is not about our concerns. It's not about your concern, and it's not about my concern. Far from it. It's not about sense of right and wrong. It's not about our sense of justice, our sense of inequalities and equalities. It's not about how we share wealth. However, if you listen to the Church of England sermon today, that's exactly what it's about. We're told the church is not a bank. Today's scripture is not about our concerns. It's about the kingdom of heaven and not our concerns. Jesus grants no pat answers to our concerns of justice, wealth and equality. The parable relates directly to the sovereignty of God's love and his uniqueness in the Christian faith. So let me explain just a moment. Whilst other religions compromise justice over mercy, for God to be merciful, his, just, his judgments must be lowered. But on that cross, what we see there is justice is upheld. 
sin and evil are condemned on that cross. Justice is fulfilled. Mercy is upheld. And what we see there is a love of God that flows to us and to his creation. Our faith is unique. It's unique. It does not compromise justice for the sake of mercy. So here's our first abstraction for today. Today we see the abundance of God's love towards us. Neither mercy nor justice nor love are compromised in God's expression towards us. It fulfilled what the prophets were to say about the one who was to come. That's our first abstraction. And our second abstraction. Kingdom sovereignty overturns our own personal sovereignty. Whether we're hired first or latterly is irrelevant in the kingdom of God. Last is first, we're told, many times by Jesus. So, as a Christian, we are reminded today that whether you started your journey with the Lord 30 years ago, or whether you started your journey with the Lord three years ago, you share the same spiritual prize. And you share that prize, the same prize, irrespective of how long you've been a Christian, and irrespective of those who've gone before us. Abraham and Moses share the same prize of glory in God, as we do. And here's our third point. Christians live under grace, and we live with an aim. And what is our aim? Our aim is this, it's God's glory and the world's salvation. God has shown an act of confidence towards man that we will finish his work. That God will fulfil his kingdom in us and that does imply that we need to test ourselves because his kingdom is not our kingdom, right? So be honest with yourself. When you heard today's parable, what were your concerns? Did you hear impartiality or partiality of sharing wealth? Did you hear an injustice? Or did you hear a sense of inequality? What was your concern? What did you hear? But the, the Christian is reminded today, the thing about God's grace is it burns through the heart of man. Grace is wrapped in the truth that highlights our character, our disposition of self, our envy, our self-perceived justice and injustice towards others in the world, who we favour and who we do not favour, grace burns through this. And so this passage is not about our concerns, what concerns us. Of course the world is unjust at times, of course there are wealth inequalities. And yes, the world could be a moral better place, but that's not the point. John Howard Yoder wrote this. Since world affairs are ultimately governed by God's providence, Christians are better off being the church than following compromised moral systems that try to reconcile biblical revelation with the necessities of governance. Do you hear what he's saying there? He's saying you're better off being the church. You're better off trusting and believing in God's providence over our lives than trying to sort out some of the injustices that we live by. And so as Christians, our concern should be on the kingdom of God. And what it, for us, it should be concerned with the kingdom of God. And why this is so important is that it keeps and holds other kingdoms to account. If we are not the church, if we are not the kingdom,
kingdom of God here, then who keeps other political kingdoms to account? That is our moral duty as Christians, to be the kingdom of God that our Father wants us to be. So three points. The first point, God's love is shown to us in abundance upon that cross. Neither mercy nor justice nor love are, com are compromised, but they are fulfilled in the scriptures. And our second point, kingdom sovereignty overturns our sense of sovereignty. Whether you're a Christian for 30 years or for three years, you share the same prize as Abraham and Moses. And our third and final point, our aim as Christians is God's glory and the world's salvation. We do that best by being the church. By being the church and coming together, we keep other kingdoms to account. Amen. So together let us declare our faith in God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. As together we share our common creed with Christians gone before us and those yet to come. And so together we say, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so let's, let's pray to our Heavenly Father. Let us together pray to the God of glory, in whom we live and move and have our being. Heavenly Father, we pray that the Church may hold true to the teachings of Jesus without being persuaded that worldly values of status and ambitious are suitable or acceptable in Christ's followers. We pray for a spirit of humility to deflate all pomposity and arrogance. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that all who are in positions of power, authority and influence 
may recognise their calling to servanthood and never lose the identity. We pray that they rule with integrity, understanding, courage and wisdom, and that we make right decisions in order that we and those around us are kept safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that all the communities here in Little Hinton and throughout the Benefit may look after and look out for one another, supporting the vulnerable, encouraging the timid, providing practical help for all who need it. We pray that in the coming weeks, those key workers, doctors and nurses, who are preparing for what may be a difficult time ahead, are supported by us in prayer and also in practical ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we bring to you all who are suffering. Suffering in mind, body or spirit. For illnesses seen and unseen. We bring to you today all who have asked our intercession. Anne Lambert, Jeff Harris, Robin Dibble, June Kellaway, Robin Saunders, Roger Gray, June Smith, Bernard, Colin, and David. we ask that you spread your wings of grace around all of those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have died, that they may now know the joy of your eternal glory, and that their burdens have been laid down. A new lasting life, transforming them through the eternal love of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that we may find new joy in giving and serving freely, without thanks, but to rejoice in the privilege of following our Lord. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you're able to, would you please stand as we share in God's peace. Last the world commands us peace in our legal systems, our authorities and police and the fire services. So, as human beings, we desire a peace with God and with this world and with each other. It's there as Christians that we share in that peace. Jesus Christ has reconciled us to God in his one body by his cross. We meet in his name and we share in his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. So together let us offer a symbol of God's peace. Peace be with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for in your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for in your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruits of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with archangels, and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and sing.
blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. So believing in the promises of God, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Let's ask together, pray the prayer after communion. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your church with your perpetual mercy. And because without you our human frailty cannot but fall, keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful. And lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so together we say, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work. To your praise and glory. Amen. As you go out into the world today, please do remember the uniqueness of our Christian faith. Justice and mercy and love, three categories upheld on that cross as the prophets said would come about. So there's an evidence point there to history, isn't there? And it is on that cross which flows that justice and mercy and love towards us, which becomes our highest concern. Other things are secondary. It is upholding that concern of God being his church in this world that we keep to account all the other governmental systems. You've been part of that today. Whatever injustices are out there, whatever coronavirus and so on, whatever they are, today you hold all that to account, governance as well over us, because today we were the church. Let's not forget that. Would you please accept God's blessing? The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. service of communion here at St Mary's Piddle Hinton. Our next service will be 6 o'clock evening.